This morning I am honored to bring the word of God. My names are James Kihato. James Kihato. And I love the Lord as my personal savior. I want to thank God because of a bishop. bishop Bishop Jimmy Kiman and Jimmy. Reverend Alice for giving me this opportunity to share the platform with them. And I know the Lord will not disappoint us. He has prepared something for us. Because he never gathers his people in vain. There is a table that is set before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am married Nimeoa. to one Wife, woman, Florence Werimo. Florence Werimo. I think you can stand up, please. And wave the church. Amen, amen. Please, I'd like her to come here. Um, as, as I continue, because she will do something. We have uh, two daughters. Uh, Jessica. Jessica. And Eliana. Na Eliana. Eliana usually sits upstairs. Amen, amen. Amen. So what I would like Florence to do is to pray for the word. Even as I share the word of God. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ this morning, we want to thank you for gathering us in this sanctuary, dear Lord. We want to thank you for we know that, Lord, you do not gather your people in vain. And this morning, Lord, we want to thank you that you have prepared a table before us, oh dear Father. And we want to thank you that even as your word comes forth, Heavenly Father, we have enlarged our capacity, dear Father. Our, hope, our hearts are open, dear Lord, to receive from you, oh God. And therefore, Lord, we want to thank you as we pray that, Lord, there is an anointing, dear Lord, that will cause your word to flow from his mouth, dear Father, from your mouth to his mouth, dear Lord, and through to each and every one of us, oh dear Lord. And Lord, we want to thank you that even as your word comes forth, my Father, we pray that, Lord, there will be healing, dear Father. We pray that, Lord, there will be hopeless, oh dear Father, and joy renewed, oh God, in our hearts. We want to thank you, Lord, and we want to bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Asante, son. Our topic today is threshing our mountains through anointing. This year is the year of threshing our mountains. And today we shall look at the aspect of anointing. You know, it was announced to us next week on Sunday. We will have an anointing service. And therefore it is very important for us to prepare ourselves for this anointing service. I will speak some few benefits of anointing and then I will be done. But before then, I would like us to read Isaiah 41, verse 14 and 16. And please give us the New Living Translation. New Living, New living Translation. Isaiah 41, verse 14 to 16. I think my time is, is up. That's what I'm told up there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Isaiah 41, verse 14 to 16, New Living Translation. I'd like us to read together. Though you are a lowly worm, Let's, let's start again. One, two, go. Though you are a lowly worm, O Jacob, don't be afraid, people of Israel, for I will help you. I am the Lord, your Redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15. You will be a new threshing instrument with many sharp teeth. Here your enemies are part, making chaff of mountains. Verse 16. You will toss them into the air, 
and the weed will blow them all away. A wild weed will scatter them, then you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Though you are a lowly womb, Japo wewe ni mdudu mdogo, O Jacob, wewe Yakobo, don't be afraid. Usiogope. For I will help you. Kwa sababu nitakusaidia. The Bible says, I am the Lord. Biblia sema mimi ndiye Bwana. I am the Lord your redeemer. Mimi ndiye Bwana mkombozi wako. And it says again, I am the Holy One of Israel. Na yasema tena kwamba mimi ni mtakatifu wa Israeli. I am the Holy One of Israel. Mimi ni mtakatifu wa Israeli. I am. I am. Mimi ndiye niliye. You know the Bible says in the book of Exodus 3 and 14. This is God saying to Moses. That I am who I am. Mimi ndiye niliye. I am who I am. Mimi ndiye niliye. And we see Isaiah saying Na tunaona Isaiah kisema that I am the Lord. Mimi ndiye Bwana. You are redeemer. Mkombozi wako. I am the holy one of Israel. Mimi ndiye mtakatifu wa Israeli. And I want to say that when I am appears to you Na nataka kusema kwamba aliye akitokea kwako something changes in your life. Kuna jambo ambalo kubadilika katika maisha yako. He may appear to you as a redeemer. Anaweza tokea kwako kama mkombozi. He may appear to you as holy. Anaweza tokea kwako kama mtakatifu. I am will appear to us this morning. Aliye atatokea kwetu asubuhi ya leo. Because he told Moses. Kwa sababu alimwambia Musa. I am who I am. I am who I am. Mimi ndiye niliye. When the I am appears to you, aliye aliye kitokea kwako. The Bible says that you will be a new threshing instrument. Biblia sema kama utakuwa chombo kipya cha kupuria. You cannot be before I am appears to you. Hauwezi ukafanyika kabla aliye atokee kwako. You will utakuwa when I am appears to you. Aliye akitokea kwako then you will basi utakuwa praise the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana lisifiwe. The Bible says that you will be a new. Biblia yasema utakuwa mpya. You will be a new threshing instrument. Utakuwa chombo kipya cha kupuria. The Bible also says that you will Tear your enemies apart. Biblia pia sema kama utawararua maadui zako. It also says that you will toss them. Vile vile sema kama utawarusha. The Bible also says that you will rejoice. Vile vile Biblia sema kama utafurahia. The Bible also says that you will glory in the holy one of Israel. Vile vile Biblia sema kama utamtukuza mtakatifu wa Israeli. Church I came to say this morning. Kanisa nimekuja kusema asubuhi ya leo. That for you to be able to will to do something. Ili uweze kufanya jambo lolote. The I am must appear to you. Aliye lazima atokee kwako. The I am must first of all reveal himself to you. Aliye lazima ajidhihirishe ajifunue kwako. And this morning I would like us to keep our hearts ready. Na asubuhi ya leo ningetaka tufungue mioyo yetu. Because the I am is appearing to us. Kwa sababu aliye anatutokea siku ya leo. The I am is appearing to you. Anatokea kwako siku ya leo. And when he comes to you, na akija kwako, he will you, he will make you anew. Ata kufanya upia. You know the I am will make you an, you anew through Jesus Christ. Ata kufanya upia kupitia Yesu Kristo. And when you are anew, na ukiwa mpya, then you'll be able to thresh any mountain ahead of you. Utaweza kusaga milima yoyote ambayo And last Sunday Pastor Moses told us, na kama tulivyoambiwa na mchungaji Moses, a mountain is anything that is bigger than you. Mlima ni chochote ambacho ni kukubwa zaidi yako. A mountain is anything that is impossible before you. Mlima ni jambo lolote ambalo ni gumu. A mountain is anything that you cannot do with your own ability. Mlima ni jambo lolote ambalo uliwezi kwa kutumia nguvu When I am appears to you, lakini aliye akitokea kwako, you will be able to thresh all the impossibilities ahead of you. Utaweza kusaga mambo yote ambayo haiwezekani mbele zako. Anything that is bigger than you will be able to thresh it. Chochote ambacho ni kikubwa kukuzidi utaweza kukisaga. And I came to announce to someone this morning. Na nimekuja kumtangazia mtu asubuhi ya leo. That when I am appears to 
you you will receive good news in Jesus name when I am appears to you you will be honored in Jesus name when I am appears to you you will advance and not stagnate in Jesus name when I am appears to you you will be highly favored in the name of Jesus when the I am appears to you you will be empowered for your assignment in Jesus name and I came to say to somebody this morning that when I am appears to you you will be prosperous in Jesus name and when I am appears to you you will be anointed to serve in the name of Jesus. When the I am appears to us, we are or to do something for him. And you know we cannot be able to do it. Because we cannot do it on our own. We can only do it through Jesus Christ. Because nobody can go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know Jesus Christ, Christ is not his last name. Christ is not his last name. You know Christ comes from the Greek word. Uh, say meaning Christos. 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 It means anointed one. So Christ means anointed one. But when it is used as a verb in Greek, it means to anoint. That means Jesus Christ is the anointed one with his anointing. The anointed one with his anointing. When he appears to us and anoints us, then we will is there anything that you want to do in this life? It's only through Jesus Christ. The anointed one with his anointing. That will make he that will make you be able to do it. And, and what is anointing? In Hebrew, it is in Hebrew word it is mashak. M-A-S-H-A-C-H. M-A-S-H-A-C-H. Mashak. Mashak. It means to anoint. Yamanisha kupaka. Or to smear with oil. Ama kupaka mafuta. It means to anoint. Inamanisha kupaka. You see, in the Old Testament, in, for anointing to take place, you know, it was a physical act. Ilikuwa ni jamba mbali la kiasilia. Like you have to come literally yourself and be anointed yourself. You cannot send a representative or you who has to come Hallelujah. Amen. Who has to come I know there are some quarters they receive mogambo. But the anointing is a physical act. And it involves smearing. You know, smearing, you pick something and you smear to my brother Hilton. You smear it. It also means to rub. I may take, uh, you know, some oil and rub the oil on his forehead. It also means pouring on his forehead. Pouring on his forehead. So, if somebody anoints you by smearing, or by pouring the oil, or by rubbing your forehead, it is one and the same thing. There is no bigger anointing in there than 
than you know spoiling or smearing hakuna upako mkuu wakati ya kumwagilia na kupaka therefore it is an outward symbol na hivyo basi ilikuwa ni ishara ya nje that god has chosen and set apart the person kwamba mtu mungu amemchagua mtu for a specific purpose kwa sababu ya kusudi fulani anointing is not done in holy kupakwa kufanyiki vivi hivi you cannot just go and be anointed in holy haiwezekani kwamba ukaenda ukapakwa tu vivi hivi we cannot anoint you to go and start doing your many things that you do hawezi ukapakwa kufanya mambo mengi ambayo huona yafanya and sometimes you know they are not right before god na wakati mwingine hata si mambo mazuri mbele za bwana no 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 anointing you be anointed upako for a specific huwa ni kwa sababu ya kazi maalum holy purpose kusudi ambalo ni takatifu holy purpose kusudi ambalo ni takatifu so the anointing we shall receive hivyo basi upako ambao utapokea is for the holy purpose for us in this year 2024 ni kwa sababu ya kusudi ambalo ni la utakatifu mwaka huu 2024 and the purpose for the year 2024 na kusudi la mwaka huu 2024 it is thrashing the mountain ni kusaga milima it is thrashing the mountain kusaga milima there is nothing bigger that will stand before us hakuna jambo kubwa ambalo lasimama mbele yetu we be able to thrash all of them naweza kusaga yote praise the name of the lord hallelujah you see anointing is making the physical Up- to line up with the spiritual upako ni kulifanya jambo la kiasilia liwe sambamba na lile la kiroho and anointing na upako is agreeing with what god has ordained in heaven ni kukubaliana na kile ambalo mungu ametawaza pale mbinguni for the earth kwa sababu ya dunia i know for me there are so many things that are ordained for me and they are still there in heaven najua kwangu pana mambo mengi ambayo ametawazwa pale mbinguni i need to make heaven down here on this earth Laz- for my life please lazima nilete bingu hapa chini duniani and when i receive the anointing nadi kipokeo upako i know that i will be agreeing with whatever is there for me in heaven najua kwamba nitakuwa nakukubaliana na kile ambacho kiko changu pale mbinguni to happen to me here on this earth nifanyike kwangu hapa duniani i don't want surprises when i go to heaven sitaki kupata sajabu nikifika pale mbinguni with the many things that are in store for me kwa yale mambo mengi ambayo nilikuwa nimewekewa in my bank account in heaven kama nina account pale mbinguni i want to withdraw everything nataka nitoe kila kitu so that i may enjoy it while i'm here on this earth ili nifurahie nikiwa hapa duniani so that when i go to heaven ili nikifika mbinguni it will just be moments of praising and worshiping the holy one itakuwa tu ni sifa na ibada kwa yule ambaye ni mtakatifu praise the name of the lord jina la bwana libarikiwe you see again tena the greek meaning of anoint maana nyingine ya neno paka katika kigiriki is made up of two words ni maneno mawili it is made up of one word is krio jina la kwanza neno la kwanza ni krio c h r c h r i o i o which means linalo maanisha to smear or rub rub oil kupaka mafuta the other word hilo neno lingine is aleifo ni aleifo a l e a l e i p h o i p h o aleifo aleifo which means to anoint linalo maanisha kupaka it means to anoint kupaka now what are the benefits of anointing faida za upako ni nini i would like us to look at uh, two great servants of god in the bible ningetaka tuangalie watumishi wawili wakuwa mungu katika biblia to draw the benefits of anointing ili tupate faida za upako the first one is david wa kwanza alikuwa ni daudi david anointed by king samuel ambaye alipakwa na samueli first samuel chapter number 16 samuel kwanza sura ya 16 verse number 1 kuanzia mstari wa kwanza i would like to read all the 13 verses ningetaka nisome mstari wote 10 so that you may be able to understand ili uelewe the bible says i'll read it in english please now the lord said to samuel how long will you mourn for saul seeing i have rejected him from reigning over israel fill your horn with oil and go I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite for I have provided myself a king among his sons verse 2 and Samuel said how can I go if so he has it he will kill me but the lord said 
take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. Verse 4. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Verse number seven, but the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Verse 8. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before, this, before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. And verse number 11, and Samuel said to Jesse, oh, are all the young men here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, said and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> I don't want to repeat all that story because you see the sequence what happened. How God spoke to, to Prophet Samuel to go to Jesse. To anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be the king. Because the Lord had refused King Saul. Because Saul had not obeyed the voice of the Lord. God had told him to go and kill all the Amalekites together with everything they own. But he kept aside all the fat cows and everything that was good. And the Bible says that he was, they actually killed the useless things. And he thought by keeping those that were fat, they were going to sacrifice to the Lord. But that was not the instructions of Jehovah. And therefore, it is very important for us to follow the instructions of God. Lest God rejects our, our anointing. And therefore now we find Samuel in the house of Jesse. And now there's something that happened in, in, in verse number two. When God was sending Samuel to the house of Jesse, he told him, take a haifa with you. Take a haifa with you. That means for you to walk to the place of anointing, you do not go to that place empty-hearted. You do not go without your sacrifice. It is a serious business church. When we go to the place of anointing, we ought to have a sacrifice in order to sacrifice to the Lord. And something else that, he, that Samuel did, he asked the sons of 
Jesse to sanctify themselves. Aliwaomba wana wa Jesse wajitambulishe. So before you are anointed, na hivyo basi kabla upate upako, we, you ought to sanctify yourself. Oh lazima ujitakase. So that you may be consecrated to God. Ili utakaswe kwa kwa Mungu. Praise the name of the Jina Lord. Jina la Mungu lisifiwe. And therefore when all the sons of the seven sons of Jesse passed before Samuel, na hivyo baada ya wana wote saba wa Jesse wa Jesse I am sure they were good looking. Like Eliab, when Samuel saw Eliab, he said that surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But it was not him who was to be anointed. So when all of them had passed, then there was uh, he asked in verse number 11. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is. Keeping the sheep. You see, David had been forgotten. David had been forgotten by his father. Daudi alikuwa amesahulika na baba yake. Until the prophet had to ask Mbaka the father Jesse. Ikabidi nabii amuulize baba Jesse. Does it mean you do not have another one? Unamaanisha kwamba hakuna mwingine? Church I came to say to someone. Kanisa nimekuja kumwambia mtu. You may be ha- you may have been forgotten Mbaka like David. Umesahulika tena. But the anointing will fish you out of that place. That place of obscurity. And you be brought into the limelight. Nobody was caring about David. Even his own father. He couldn't see and recognize David as one to be anointed. There are many people who look at you. They don't see whether there is anything that can come out of you. When they look at you, they see somebody that is not eloquent. When they look at you, they say like the way Jesse told David, uh, Jesse told uh, prophet Samuel. That he is the youngest. He is the youngest. That means he doesn't qualify to be anointed as the king. And I say that people can give you names. They can call you the youngest. They can call you the aged or the poorest. They can call you the less educated. But I came to announce to you regardless of all the names that people have given you the Lord wants to anoint you my sister and my brother. Even yourself you feel like you are almost forgotten and you are somewhere hidden. When the anointing is taking place you do not want to show up because you feel yourself like you are the least of the, la- of the least. But I came to tell you today that when you feel that you are the, la- the least of the least, God wants to anoint you. God is looking for you. He wants to anoint you. And this anointing in my first point, the anointing will locate you. It is the anointing that located the David. The anointing located David. The same anointing will locate you wherever you are. From that place that you've been forgotten. You may, ju- you may be just a shepherd. But that anointing will locate you. Praise the name of the Lord. When no one notices you. Jehovah sees you. 
Your presence may not be felt. It may not be felt even in your family. Your presence may not be felt even in your workplace. Your presence may not be felt even in this church. But God knows where you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, David could have been forgotten. But the anointing was located him. People may write you off. But the anointing will locate you. Verse number 11, the Bible says, There he is keeping the sheep. There he is. There you are. I came to tell somebody this morning there you are you could have been forgotten by people you could have been forgotten by the pastors you could have been forgotten by your family members but there you are you may be the youngest but there you are there you are in the name of Jesus the anointing will locate you the anointing will locate you. And the Bible says thereafter, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. For we will not sit down till he comes here. When the anointing locates you, nothing will progress without your presence. When the anointing locates you, everything will be at start still. Until you are brought on board. There is somebody that is here. He is thinking this message is not for me. It belongs to the people that go there in front and preach. It belongs to the cell leaders. It belongs to the leadership of the church. But I came to tell you. When the anointing locates you. Nothing will take place in this church until you are brought on board in the mighty name of Jesus. When the anointing locates you, it will change your status. It will change your story from a shepherd boy to a king in the name of Jesus Christ. They may give you names, but I want to let you know that there is one who knows your name. There is one who knows your name. And in, as a matter of fact, if you are born again, he has written your name in the Lamb's book of life. When the angels are opening the book of life, oh, they are looking at that book and they are finding your name. You may not be known by your politician. You may not be known by the president. But God knows you. And you are known in heaven. And quickly I would like us also to say that the anointing, the the other benefit of anointing, it will validate you. It will validate you. In verse number 12 of 1 uh, Samuel 16, eh? the Bible so says, so he sent and brought him in. Now he was rundi. Uh, no. It means that he is healthy looking. Oh, he is glowing. Uh, na meta meta, you Anangara. see, just a minute before, uh, Samuel is asking Jesse, isn't there another young person here? Samuel, anamuliza, uh, Jesse, kwani, hakuna and he is looking over there. Na and he is saying, there he is. Na anasema, yule. There he is. Dear yule. And then he was brought in. Somebody keeping the sheep. He is not on his sad best. Because he is taking care of the sheep. I am sure Achunga he was sold all over. But when he was called to the anointing place, there is something that changed. His 
countenance changed. And all of a sudden, he was good looking. He was looking healthy. Praise the name of the Lord. When the anointing locates you and you obey to come, your countenance will change. Your countenance will change. If you've been having a dropping face without any smile, when the anointing comes upon you, all of a sudden the countenance will change. You will start glowing. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It will validate you. The Bible says in verse number 12, let me read the whole of it. So he sent and brought him in and he, ha and he was ruddy, meaning he was healthy looking, uh, healthy looking or glowing with bright eyes and good looking. And, and the Lord said, arise, anoint him for this is the one. Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. There is nothing as good as God validating it is me to be anointed. Yes, you may be called to the altar. But when heavens opens up, and God says, this is the one, it changes the whole story. Being validated by God himself. Yes, you can be validated by men. But it is far much better to be validated by God. Amidst many people, you will be singled out. And heaven will say, this is the one. The, the anointing will validate you. There will be no confusion that you are the one to be anointed. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 5. The Bible says that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And I came to announce to you today that before you are conceived, God knew you. Before you came to this world, God knew you. That means you started existing before you are conceived. And that's why God is saying, this is the one. Because he knows you from eternity. He wants to anoint you. He wants to validate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The vast benefit of anointing. It will separate you. In verse number 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil. And anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And anointed him in the midst of his brothers. In the midst of your family. In the midst of your workmates. You will be anointed. In the midst of his brothers. David was anointed. In the midst of your colleagues. You will be anointed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the midst of the people that 
not know you kati kati ya watu ambao unakujua you will be anointed utapakwa in the midst of this congregation here kati ya hili kusanyiko hapa you will be anointed utapakwa in the name of jesus christ kati ka jina la yesu and that anointing na huo upako who separate you utakutenganisha from them toka kwao in the name of the lord kati ka jina la leviticus 20 and verse number 26 walawi 20 mstari wa 26 the bible says and you shall be holy to me na mtakuwa watakatifu kwangu for i the lord i am holy kwani mimi mungu ni mtakatifu and have separated you from the peoples na nimewatenganisha toka kwa watu wengine that you should be mine ili muwe watu wangu the lord has separated you bwana amekutenganisha through this anointing kupitia huu pako to become his ili uwe wake i'm looking forward na tazamia when when all of us wakati sisi sote in this congregation god can say that these are my people i have separated them and you are being separated for a specific purpose in the name of jesus christ because god has chosen us verse peter chapter 2 and verse 9 but you are a chosen people lakini nyinyi watu ambao wamekuwa a royal priesthood a holy nation God special possession praise the name of the lord i don't know how many chosen people are here this morning I don't know how many people are God's special possession. But I came to announce to you. The benefit of anointing. It will separate you. To become God's special possession. It will separate you. To be God's special chosen people. Praise the name of the Lord. And the fourth one the other fourth benefit is that it will empower you the anointing will empower you the anointing will empower you verse number 13 mstari wa 13 of first samuel chapter 16 samuel wa kwanza 16 and verse the and the spirit of the lord came upon david that day forward naye roho wa mungu akawa juu ya daud kuanzia siku hiyo kuendelea and the spirit of the lord came upon david from that day forward naye roho wa mungu akawa juu ya daud kuanzia siku hiyo kuendelea i would like to say when you are anointed na ningetaka kusema kwamba ukipakwa the spirit of the lord will come upon you roho wa mungu atakuwa juu yako the spirit of the lord will come upon you roho wa mungu atakuwa juu yako the spirit of the lord will come upon you to empower you na roho wa mungu atakuja ili the anointing will invoke the power of the holy spirit to rest on you Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you So when you are anointed you will receive power You will receive power You will be empowered Whatever has been impossible you will be able to do it because you to be powerful. Kwa sababu through the through being empowered by the holy spirit praise the name of the lord the, the fifth benefit of anointing we will find it in the prophet's soul in first samuel chapter number 9 samuel kwanza sura ya 9 and uh, i know all of us know the story about saul najua kwamba sisi sote tunajua simulizi ya sauli his father was kish baba yake alikuwa ni kish and uh, his father was a mighty man of power na alikuwa ni mtu mwenye nguvu na uweza that means he was a rich and wealthy man kumaanisha alikuwa ni mtu mwenye mali in chapter 9 first samuel chapter 9 sura ya 9 samuel wa kwanza we read how he lost part of his flock tunasoma jinsi ambavyo alipoteza sehemu ya mifugo wake the down the down case got lost punda wakapotea and therefore na hivyo kish asked his son kish akamuliza mwanawe who was called Saul aliyeitwa Saul to go and 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 get one of the servants aende amchukue mtumishi mmoja to go and look 
after or to look for the lost Donkeys. So Saul and his servant, they went through Ephraim, and Shalisha, and Shalim, and Zuf. And they did not find any don the lost donkeys. And when evening came, Saul told the servant, Now look, it is evening. And we have not recovered the donkeys. It is better for us to go back home. Lest our father Kish will, will, will start worrying about us instead of the lost donkeys. But 1 Samuel chapter, uh, chapter 9 verse number 6. We find the servant replying to Saul. Look now. There is in this city a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He is an honorable man. All that he says comes to pass. So let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. These two gentlemen had reached their dead end. But this servant was somebody who was godly man. And that's why he told his, uh, his master Saul, look now, there is in this city a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He is an honorable man. All that he says surely comes to pass. And I dare say to this congregation this morning and to those that are listening, listening me, that there is in this city of Zimmerman a man of God. There is in this city of Zimmerman a man of God, an honorable man. And that man is our Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani. There is a man of God in this city of Zimmerman. There is an honorable man in this city of Zimmerman. And what he says comes to pass. There is an honorable woman in this city of Zimmerman. In this set of Zimmerman, there is a woman of God. And whatever they say comes to pass. And verse 7, it says, Then Saul said to his servant, But look if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread in our vessels is all gone. And there is no present to bring to the man of God. And I fight Saul asking the servant, what do we have? But verse number 8, and the servant answered Saul, look, I have here at hand one fourth of a shekel of silver I will give to the man of God. I will give to the man of God. You know, Saul was worried. He is being introduced to a man of God. And something happened within him. He realized the anointing in this man of God. That I cannot go empty hearted. They had finished everything. And therefore the servant had to step in. And he said I have a quarter of shekel of silver. This is all that they had. 
To Saul they had a quarter of a shekel of silver to bring to the man of God as a sacrifice. But to Samuel he had a heifer to bring to the altar of sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't depend on how much you can give at the altar of sacrifice. But what you have, what you have, but you cannot come to the altar of sacrifice, the anointing place, empty-handed, you have to look for something. And, and I charge all of us that even as we prepare to come next Sunday, to be anointed. Look for something. Look for something. Look for something. Samuel could not go to that altar without actually a sacrifice. Saul can, could not go to, to the prophet Samuel without carrying a sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And I want us to realize that the moment Saul and the servant decided you know, to see the man of God and carry a sacrifice, a lot of things started aligning themselves. A lot of things started happening. And this brings me now to the fifth benefit of anointing that it will bring you destiny helpers. Remember they had traveled far and wide and they had not found the donkeys. They had, not they had not found somebody who can help them. But the moment they decided to go to the altar of sacrifice, verse number 11, the Bible says, as they went up the hill to the city, First Samuel chapter 9, Samuel Kwanza, verse Kuri number 11. As they went up the hill to the city, they met some young women going out to draw water and say to them, is the seer here? And they answered them and said, yes, there he is, just ahead of you. There he is. Dear Yule. Just ahead of you. Bele too. Remember even the exclamation of David by Jesse. Jesse. Is, Jesse told Samuel. Jesse there he is. Dear Yule. There you are. Dear who you? Child of God. When the anointing locates you, you will be brought into the limelight. The people around you, they may not understand it, but there you are. Praise the name of the Lord. There you are. You may be walking discouraged, tired and worn out, and almost giving up. You may be in a mission impossible. But I came to let you know that your destiny helper are just around the corner because of the anointing. I want you to visualize something. The donkeys are lost. Saul and the servant that are sent. Saul is going to look for the donkeys. He has no clue what God has in store for him. He is looking for the lost. He is Punda. looking for the lost donkeys. He is busy looking around yeah, for the lost donkeys. He does not realize Hajui. that the lost donkeys wale punda are actually, uh, you know, 
it is God that is orchestrating everything ni ulikuwa ni mpango wa Mungu so that he can be able to walk towards where the man of God is ili atembee mahali ambapo mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa there are some losses in our lives kuna mambo mengine ambayo umepoteza katika maisha that are not meant to destroy us ambayo si ya kutuangamiza they are meant to take us to our destiny help us yanafaa tupeleke kwenye watu ambao watatuwezesha in this life katika haya maisha there are some losses in in our lives kuna mambo ambayo umepoteza that will cause us to walk towards what God has ordained for us. Ambaye atatuwezesha kutembea yale Mungu ametupangia. It may be the loss of your income. Inawezekana kwamba umepoteza mapato yako. And you are busy looking around what you you know for the lost things. Na uko kwenye harakati ukitafuta vitu ambavyo umepotea. It could be even the loss of a loved one. Pengine hata umempoteza mpendwa. It could be the loss of your possessions. Inawezekana ni mali yako umepoteza. And you are busy looking for the na uko kwenye harakati But I came to announce to you. Lakini nimekuja nikutangazie. The anointing kwamba pako will cause destiny help us to come to you. Utasababisha wasaidizi wako wale. As you walk around na utatembea looking after that which you, you lost. Ukitembea ukitafuta kile ambacho ulikuwa umepoteza. And who are destiny help us? Na wasaidizi wa hatima ni kina nani? Destiny help us are people who connect you to the top. Ni wale watu ambao kuunganisha na kule juu. Destiny help us are people who facilitate your destiny ni wale watu ambao hukuwezesha kufikia hatima yako destiny help us are people who add value to you ni wale watu ambao huongeza dhamana katika maisha yako destiny help us are the are the people who are strategically positioned to help you to arrive at your expected end ni watu ambao wamewekwa mahali ili wakuwezesha ufikie hatima yako. They help you navigate through obstacles. Wanakusaidia ili uweze kupita mahali ambapo pana vikwazo. They help your ministry. Wanasaidia huduma yako. They help your career. Wanakusaidia kikazi. They help your family. Wanakusaidia katika familia. They help your business. Wanakusaidia kibiashara. Praise the name of the Lord. Jina la Bwana lisifiwe. They fight on your behalf. Wanapigana kwa niaba yako. I see the battle belongs to them. Ni kana kwamba vita ni vya Destiny help us remove barriers for you along the way. Huwa wanakuongondolea vizuizi katika mapito yako. Destiny help us they fight on your behalf. Kupigana kwa niaba yako. They use their network hutumia rasilimali zao. To open opportunities for you. Ili wakufungulie milango. Destiny help us. Hawa watu. They are positioned by God. Huwa wamekwa na Mungu. In order to make your way smooth. Ili wafanye mapito yao yako yenyewe. Who is your yenoko. destiny helper? Msaidizi wako ni Who are your destiny helpers? How are to praise the name of the, the Lord. Lord. The other benefit of anointing as I wind up now. Faida nyingine ya upako na That it will bring favor. Kwamba italeta kibali. First verse number 15. Mstari wa 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel. Basi Mungu akamwambia Samuel. In his ear. Now the Lord told Samuel in his ear the Basi day before Saul came uh, saying Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin and you shall anoint him commander of my people Israel that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me and verse 21 of first Samuel chapter 9 and Saul answered and said am I not a Benjamite or the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin why then do you speak like this to me the anointing will cause favor to Israel be upon you like Saul the anointing upako will cause you, you to cause favor to Israel come upon you like Saul utasababisha kibali kiwe juu yako kama Saul Saul was busy looking after what was lost. Sauli alikuwa anatafuta vile vilikuwa vimepotea. But God was very busy aligning his assignment for him. Lakini Mungu alikuwa njiani akitengeneza njia yake. You know you could be very busy looking for everything that you lately lost. Waweza ukawa mbioni kutafuta yale ambayo umewapoteza. But God is very busy ordering your footsteps. Lakini Mungu yuko mbioni akitengeneza mapitio. To the place that he has anointed. To the place of anointing. Kwa mahali pa upako. The anointing of your assignment. Upako katika kazi yako. Because when the anointing rests upon you. Kwa sababu upako ukiwa juu yako. 
Favor will locate you. Kibali it will bring you before great men. Kita watu waku. And I would like us to rise up to our feet at this point. Because I know that the anointing Kwa sababu na upako. is so heavy upon us. Uko juu yetu. And we ought to move according to the anointing of God. Even as we prepare ourselves for the physical anointing next Sunday, we ought to prepare through, through sanctification. We need to sanctify ourselves. Sanctify our lives. Make ourselves ready to be anointed. For there is a great assignment upon ahead of us upon our lives. Without, without a doubt for all of us, God has ordained us to do a special and a certain task. And therefore we ought to be anointed. And this morning God is saying, there he is. There he is. The man of of whom I spoke to you about. There you are. The person Bishop has been thinking about. He has already prepared for next Sunday. So that he may be anointed. Because he is thinking about me and you. For us to be anointed. In order for us to be able to complete our assignments. In order to have our destiny help us. In order to have the favor of God upon our lives. In order for us to be separated to God. In order for us to be validated by God. In order for the anointing to locate us. Everything has been set in place. The only thing that we require to do is to sanctify ourselves. The whole of this week, I encourage all of us that let us be in a mood of prayer to sanctify ourselves to make ourselves ready for this consecration for great things shall happen in our lives. Even as we continue to pray we know that that anointing will bring healing. James 5, 14 and 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. That anointing will bring healing. And this morning, you could be here. You don't have a personal relationship with Christ. Christ the anointed one with his anointing. This is the first step for you to receive the anointing by receiving Jesus Christ in your life. Isaiah 10 verse number 27. The Bible says it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The, the anointing will remove every burden. The anointing will break every yoke. Have you been yoked to sin? Have you been yoked 
to, to evil habits. Is there something that you are believing God to deliver you from? You have tried with your ability, but it is not possible. There is an anointing here this morning to break every yoke as I invite the ministry team to come and pray over you. If you have a burden, the anointing will take it away. If you have a yoke, it will be broken in the name of Jesus. Ministry team, I request you. Briefly, please come. And if there is something that you like to commit to the Lord, if there is a burden that you like to be removed, they're going to pray for you.